Alright guys, so you know we've been over at level 7 for a couple of days filming some really cool trucks, but they've got a really cool neighbor who's got some awesome trucks we're going to look at. So this is Mark, and he's going to tell us about, what is this, one, two, it's five trucks. Five 67, 72 trucks. So we're going to talk to him really quickly about this. This is a 70 C10 short bed. Uh, it was redone in 2012 by a friend of mine. He did it for his uh, dad who lives out in West Virginia. And he decided to sell it here about three weeks ago. And he wanted us to uh, be a part of our collection. And uh, it's got a 350, been bored uh, 355. Pretty solid old truck. It's not a numbers matching truck by no means, but it is a solid truck to where if somebody wanted to have fun with a daily driver, this, this is a pretty good truck right here to do that. This truck here is a 1972. I've owned it for about, uh, probably right around two years. I originally bought it. I was thinking about trying to repaint a truck for myself. I don't have a whole lot of money into it. I figured, well, I can't mess it up. And uh, after I got it home, my youngest boy, who was 16 at the time, he uh, decided he liked it like it is. Yeah. So we kind of left it and let him play with it, take it to street machines and just have a good time. And every now and then him and his girlfriend go out on a date on it. And just uh, pretty much another daily driver. It's, it's probably the roughest truck that I own. And my, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, it needs uh, rocker panels, uh, cab corners, and stuff like that. It's got potential. And uh, one of these days, we're going to get to it and play with it. And I noticed it's original paint. And it's ochre, factory ochre color. And it's just, that's cool. I love it. This truck here is the third truck that I bought. I've owned it for about two and a half years. I bought it off a gentleman that was a truck driver. As you can see the swan on the hood, uh, I'd like to take that off. And then when I finally decided that, yeah, I'm gonna take it off, uh, family says, no, you leave that swan where it's at. <laughs> this is a numbers matching truck here. We got 95,000 original miles. Oh, cool. And I am the second owner of this truck. Uh, the guy, the gentleman that I bought it off of, his father had passed away and uh, he just wanted to get rid of it because he, wasn't going to do anything with it, but he was in his mid 60s, so he uh, sold it to us. It's by far the the hardest truck I've ever had to buy. I had to make three <laughs> trips to uh, get this truck bought before we finally come to a deal. Yeah, sometimes so, uh, it works like that, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, he gave us uh, opportunity to put it in our collection, I guess. And whenever I retire, I'm hoping that maybe I can. Uh, play with these trucks and enjoy my retirement, fix them up. Uh, I call this my Redneck 401k. There you go. Uh, I don't think you're the only one uh, only one in the country who's, who's thinking like that too. Sure. Put I your mean, money I, in trucks. <laughs> I can tell you right now that uh, what the money's losing in the bank, you're probably not losing very much on these trucks. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, this truck right here is the second truck I bought. Went to Ada, Oklahoma to get this one. Uh, me and a buddy of mine. As you see, it's got some GM aftermarket steps. That's a step that GM made up, and that was an aftermarket thing that you had to go to your GM dealer to be able to get. This truck also, I uh, don't have the cap for it anymore, but it also, aftermarket, has a crank down spare tire. In 1972, uh, it was unheard of to have a crank down spare tire, and that's one of the GM aftermarket uh, items that they offered back in the day. This truck right here is pretty much the one that started it all for me. A buddy of mine had one of these in high school and we used to uh, do a little drag racing and cruising town and just had a lot of fun in a truck just like this one. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so that's the whole reason why this particular truck is here in, in my collection. If you come over here to the other side, uh, this truck has also got a a toolbox GM offered on the side that is a rare item also it's also a hard item to fix if 
rust takes it. Yes, it is. But it uh, it can be fixed. For all you truck guys out here, that when you close the hood on these old trucks, you don't slam them. You should be able to do that right there. <laughs> and if you can't slam your hood of your truck like that, then you need to do some adjusting. You should not have to slam the hood on these trucks. All these trucks, the hood closes the same way. Yeah, nice little latching system on a 6772 for sure. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about this truck. Uh, this is a 1972 also. Uh, it's a short bed. It's got an LS53. It's just a, a motor that they did back when we built this truck in 2015-16. It's just a regular junkyard truck motor uh, that we put in this one and at that time that's what they were doing it's not quite what they're doing at level seven now with some of them <laughs> uh, souped up trucks that they have yep. but uh, this was a ground up restoration truck everything except the drive shaft has been powder coated underneath it it's got a Hoskins suspension kit underneath it it's been lowered four inches in the front and six in the back vintage air you just cream my crop here i guess yeah. my wife says uh hey, all the rest of them leave that this one is going to stay so, yeah so i don't know sounds like you got her blessing then <laughs> yeah well she drives this one quite regular and another cool thing about this is jesse at level seven actually painted it right yes sir that's yeah. awesome yeah he uh i'm not one of them guys that can afford to uh pay somebody to do turnkey so he did quite a bit of the work, set it up, you know, as far as the transmission and the motor and wiring and all that technical stuff. Yeah. And then the easy stuff, I call it. Uh, me and my buddy put all that on. Well, Mark, I really appreciate you uh, giving us a lowdown on your trucks. Yeah. This is awesome. So thank Many you very times. much. I appreciate I'm about to see me in a few years. Maybe we'll have some more. <laughs> I love that. We just walked right over here across the, the road from your shop and you had this K5 Blazer sitting inside and I'm like, man, I gotta know a little bit more about that. So yeah. can you just quickly give us a rundown on what this yeah. Blazer is? Yeah, so one of our customers uh, just bought this from another dude that we know and um, he had been building it for his wife as like an off-road rig, drive to town, get some groceries, whatever. And uh, it's got a super cool backstory. He bought it from a, a kid who had bought it from a government auction. So when the kid bought it, he bought it from Idaho and it was an Idaho fish and game truck. And before it was an Idaho fish and game truck, we deduct from another dash tag that it was a federal wildlife truck before that. Uh, so it was bought new as a federal wildlife truck, sold to the state of Idaho as a fish and game truck. And it was a two wheel drive blazer its entire life. So wow. if you look, it's got original upholstery on the seats and the driver's seat is the only one that shows anywhere. So it was probably like office worker, yep. you know, somebody that just used it as a, uh, a government vehicle to drive back and forth to work. So it still only has 87,000 original miles on it. It's an 89, so it's factory 350 fuel injected. The motor's totally stock, but like, you know, alternator, power steering pump, valve cover gaskets have been replaced and stuff. But the guy that finished it or the one that ended up building it um, did off-road designs everything so all their suspension turned it into a four-wheel drive truck it's got um, a corporate 10 bolt front with 456 gears a uh, corporate 14 bolt uh, full float rear end in the back with a uh, detroit locker and 456 gears and the 700 r4 and plenty of bugs and wasps to go with it yeah, all of a sudden i bet you anything that was one of them murder murder hornets <laughs> anyways they built the tranny built a transfer case and drive shafts and turned it into a four-wheel drive truck on 35s originally it would have had you know the big idaho fish and game uh placard on the side yeah. of it his wife and him had the outside reshot in the factory in the, in the original color yeah. so the paint that's in the floor and on the firewall and in the inside of it is all original and all in killer, killer shape. Well, so, let's take a look at it. Yeah. Let's take a look at it while we're here. Yeah, so you can see that, well, don't mind this piece that's falling off here, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, original upholstery on the seats. Um, so these, this would have had like the big vinyl mat that covered the flooring, but man, you can see like all the original paint. It's barely got any surface rust in it. Um, oh man like these are the original door panels got a little bit of discoloration on the top but uh man it's just well, a really the... good blazer yeah it really is but so really... anyways john my buddy is the one that bought this he's just gonna him and his wife are gonna take the top off of it and and drive it um 
this one having such low miles, it, I guess, so it was a Scottsdale, but I guess it was ordered, you know, so it has air conditioning that works and factory cruise control that works. Wow. So, I mean, it's like full functional, ready to go, 75 mile an hour down the interstate truck. Man, very, very cool. Well, thanks for showing yeah, us this thing. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I love Blazers, so I'm into yep. this. Yeah, the truck community would definitely appreciate it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, this is, uh, when you sent me pictures of this, this is the part that really got me. Yeah, I mean. Because I'm like, look at all this original paint on the inside. It's good. Of this blazer mm -hmm. and that floor my gosh yep there's some bits and pieces that we've bought to to help him kind of finish it out yeah but, sure uh, but it's really good so the previous owner he replaced every like weather stripping seal you know door seals stuff like that so everything nice and good. tight yeah well you want to uh, fire this thing up oh yeah you'll see that typical small block puff of smoke oh yeah that's normal Audio on since I've already made that mistake once today. <laughs> hey, let's do that again. Audio's off. All right, Jesse. So I saw this over uh, just sitting in one of the driveways out in front of the shop, and I had to, well, I had to call it out because my wife really wants one of these, oh, and yeah. so do I. Yeah. And this one just has all the curb appeal, even without a front clip on it. Yeah. Um, so tell us what you're doing with this thing. So we built my yellow light truck yeah. before we had kids, and so we were going to enjoy that as a family, and then we have two kids now, so you can't drive that truck yeah so my wife is all about these so she found this one it came out of wyoming original paint original interior it's got a the hood ain't on it but it's got a shotgun hole through the hood somebody oh, shot that's the hood. cool but uh she wanted to drive this take the kids to school in it go pick up groceries whatever but the stock motor didn't last long. yeah it was a three 360 this yeah. one's a 360 yeah. turbo 400 and then they have like that borg warner vacuum operated transfer case yep yep and so Man, the only thing logical to do is to put an LS motor in it. I mean, it is in our I world, hate, right? <laughs> I hate that I like refer to that in every, yeah. this is the answer. Yeah. But uh, this was the easiest answer to get my wife to drive it to school. And to, yeah, you know. reliability, yeah. dependability, power for, yeah. per dollar. It's hard to beat an yeah. LS. So Everybody on this channel knows yeah. that, you know, yeah. but it's, uh, it's cool to see that you're doing it in this. Yeah. Is that a yeah. common thing? An LS motor? Yeah, yeah an LS motor in a, uh, in a Grand Wagon? Uh, there's a few. I, yeah. Like, I don't look for these builds, but um, they're becoming more of a popular vehicle. I mean, I guess Wagoneers have always been popular. Yeah, I think they have. Uh, forever. Uh, yep. And they seem like they're a vehicle that people maintained really yeah, well. Yeah, I agree. Like, the customers, that, or the people that bought Wagoneers, like, kept them forever yep. and just yep. maintained the heck out of them. Yeah, I remember my granddad had a mid-80s, I guess it was. I was born in 83, so I was six or seven, and he bought one new. So yep. maybe late 80s. Yep. We have a, a client that's at your nose and throat doctor, and he's yeah. had like a number of them. Yeah. He says that they're killer. They're yeah. awesome. He grew up in the Dakotas. Yeah. So he said that they're great four wheel drive, you know, get to work vehicles. So, me being the uh, husband that I am, <laughs> I, I use the need for her to get a motor yeah. as a, an answer for me to get a new motor for the yellow truck. Right. There we <laughs> so go. So I said, you know what, honey, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you my motor. Yeah. Because it sounds like a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. 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 Yours, I'm giving. I'm giving as well. Yeah. So, my yeah. truck had a an LQ4 built by Texas Speed yep. with a blower on it. Yeah. So we just took the blower off and put a throttle body on it, vintaged it up to look like an AMC motor. Very cool. Yep. And then Bowler uh, took the original 400 and then they built us a new 400 with a Chevy case. Okay. So it's got a Chevy case 400, turbo 400 now, the Bolt Star LS motor. Very cool. And then they built it super weird with a uh, the 10 spline output so we can use the stock Borg Warner transfer case still. Very cool. So it's still got like all the normal jeep wagon here you know you turn it the yeah. vacuum operated four wheel drive yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so she doesn't want it to look modified so right. it's got like all the stock jeep wagon here four wheel drive control drive shafts are stock you know so, very cool yeah so it'll be kind of a the thing that we do now which is decorate ls motors to look like not 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 like an ls motor yeah. all right so what are you going to do with this thing our goal to get it done this year is to 
drive it to LS Fest and Bowling Green That's and then fun. pull the trailer with my yellow truck on. Yes. Yeah. Two vibrant yeah. vehicle, vibrant colored yeah. vehicles yeah. going down the road, vintage vehicles. Both, both are 78s. Both have original. Wow. Cars. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's just killer. Well, she wants to do the typical like camping and stuff like that. So yeah, absolutely. We're trying to talk them into camping at LS Fest. There we go. Hey, little that's rooftop killer. tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be awesome. Yeah, well, I love it, man. Thanks for showing it to yeah. us. So when you're at level seven, there is no telling what's going to show up. This is my new buddy Andy and a friend of of Jesse's at Level Seven Motorsports. And man, check out this truck, Andy. This thing is awesome. Tell us what we're looking at here. This is Mongo. He's a 1970 C10. I've had it for about uh, eight years. It's sitting on a full Roadster Shop spec chassis. Apparently, what Jesse says is the first one. It's Man. got a uh, 525 horse LS3. All air ride, lays out on the ground as you can see. Uh, 24 by 10 and a half on the back, 22 by eight and a half on the front. Those are hot rod by Boyd? Yes, they are. Very cool. Yeah. Well, this is a killer truck, man. Thanks for driving it over and letting us take a look at it. I love the sort of down and dirty, like, hey man, we just threw this body on a chassis and threw some cool wheels on it and a killer drivetrain and just burn up the roads, man. I think that's awesome. So thanks for uh, taking the time to let us look at it. No problem. Cue the music.